Something is going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day, <laughs> oh, Jesus, creepers. G'day, look at that, it's got four people watching us already, you guys are as keen as mustard, as always, Ange is first in, absolutely love it. Now, the story is, there are apparently thunderstorms and lightning and all the hell's breaking loose in the city outside, so I would not be surprised if a lightning strike completely destroys our connection and we go off the air halfway through the show. So if that happens, uh, at least you know what's happening, ironically, of course, uh, it's all been controlled at my place, and I have all my equipment set up to a UPS. So we should be able to keep transmitting, even if my lights go out, so we could be here in the dark. But uh, there you go. So there you go. We're just letting you know uh, with all the people out there dealing with the, with the weather being the way it is. And, of course, it's a Wednesday night, and it's raining again. I honestly think nature is out there trying to tell you people, you people out there, to stay at home when you can go out anywhere in the state now Stay home and watch us, as 10 people are doing right now. We've got Tomo. We've got our oh, good old Spankins back. We've got Joe's joiners. Good old Colin, Susie, Greg. Oh, they're, and Michelle, of course, are rolling in like oranges. Absolutely fantastic. And Carol from Barrel, Ballarat, which is absolutely awesome. So there you go. Uh, yes, where's the earth-shattering kaboom? That's exactly right. We have got, as always, a huge uh, show for you. But we, before we kick that off, I first have to introduce my lads. So, lads, how are we tonight? Nano, nano. <laughs> Thunderstorms and lightning, very, very frightening me. Uh, very, very good. Anyway, we have to move on, otherwise we'll just get bogged down in like a shitload of comments. So we're up to Jeffro. So we're going to be talking about pets and animals from pop culture stuff, right? So uh, there's a long list of them. Now, if Jeffro follows tradition, he'll forget and miss a whole lot of things, and there'll be a whole lot of honourable mentions added into the mix. So we'll have to see how that goes. What do you reckon, Jeffro? Oh, absolutely. I mean, one honourable mention is I was listening to the Jerry Anderson podcast and they had talk about Fireball XR5 and I thought, oh, I could have put Looney the Lazoon in there. So uh, <laughs> there you go. But, um, I mean, there's so many that you could put in, so many you can't always think of in the uh, in, in one research time. So uh, let's let's see how we go. I did manage to get 72 of the freaking things. So uh, I thought that was pretty impressive, even by my own standards. The problem is that 72 pictures of exactly the same animal. Um, and <laughs> I agree with you, Daniel. Live in the moment. Totally agree. So there we go. All right, let's kick this puppy off. <laughs> Get it? Kick the puppy? Anyway, there you go. <laughs> All right. Over to you, Jeffro. Go for it. Okay, so here we are, and we're going to look at, uh, as Dag said, animals and pets in uh, science fiction and fantasy. So I thought it would be good to include fantasy because, heck, you know, I needed to pat it out. So let's look at the, uh, the examples. And the first one we have is cats. So let's, that looks a bit freaky. I sort of think I'm getting hypnotized, you know, you're getting sleepy. Uh, but uh, let's have a look at the cats in science fiction. So the most famous ones we have here, uh, Jonesy the, uh, the cat. So probably the, if there was like a family feud and it's like name a, a an animal out of science fiction, Jonesy would certainly be in most people's top five. So, okay, uh, hang on, I'm going to cut you off there. It's Jones, not Jonesy. Oh well, I'm 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 good buddies with Jonesy, so uh, <laughs> be like be like me and Trumpy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jones, Jones the cat. I'm really Jonesing to continue on. Anyway, let's um, let's look at the fantasy side. So. Um, it's always interesting to see if people actually guess what these um, actual uh, pets and animals are. So uh, this one is uh, from Harry Potter, and it's Mrs. Norris, who is um, uh, Hogwarts caretaker Angus Filch's cat. And then we have uh, Crookshanks, who is Hermione's cat. So uh, I thought two really cute pictures, rather than have to sort of find two two pictures, just bundle them up in thanks to fan art. Uh, that's the one I've chosen. Now, from the other one, you probably guessed that one because you can actually sort of make out uh, Dave Lister there. So this is actually uh, Frankenstein, the Holy Mother from uh, Red Dwarf. So as we all know, sort of that's what uh, uh, cat eventually sort of evolved from. So Frankenstein is the uh, is the cat. So that's actually the cat, is it the character cat, is it? 
that's actually where cat evolved from sort of over many 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 generations so that's the holy mother where uh, where where it all started um and for joe no there is no ferrets so uh, <laughs> there well you funny you should say that there was almost going to be a ferret that was in the movie hollow man but i couldn't get a decent enough picture hang on wasn't there that movie ferrets bueller's day off <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you beat me by this much, dude. <laughs> anyway, move on. Maybe, okay, maybe she was, she was a Charlie's what? Angel. Maybe it was a what? Charlie's Angel. Ferret Fawcett. It was a Charlie's Angel. Move along. Move along. Move along. Okay, so uh, in the not quite so uh, easily identifiable cats. We have from the movie This Island Earth from 1955. So this is Dr. Adam's pet cat, Neutron. So named because he's so positive. And when I was looking on IMDb, they said, well, that's a real stuff up because neutrons don't actually uh, generate positive energy. So <laughs> there you go. They're neutral. <laughs> that, yes. Now, uh, the middle one here we have from the, uh, the classic... Um, Golden Years movie, The Incredible Shrinking Man from 1957. So this is uh, Butch, the family cat that uh, when um, The Incredible Shrinking Man started to shrink, suddenly became very, very nice uh, food. So that was a classic scene from that movie. And so it's, on, very, it's very interesting because in the film, the uh, the full-size people think the cat has eaten the dude, and, of course, they haven't. He hasn't, right? Mm. He's stuck in the basement somewhere. But just imagine you thinking, okay, I try, it was the wife thinking, oh, yeah, the, the, my local moggy's just chowed down on the husband. <laughs> yeah, that's an image for you. So there you go. And then on the uh, the right, we actually have uh, from the movie Village of the Giants in 1965. So uh, what happened is that uh, there was a, a, a kid called Genius who creates a substance called goo. I'm not making this up. This is actually uh, part of the synopsis. And uh, the goo gets put on a, uh, a cat and a a pair of ducks and suddenly they grow so there's the uh the result of uh what you do when you go up a cat now for everybody watching this you got to slow down everybody's chucking in these things what about this one what about that one jeffro can only go so fast he's an old dude you just gotta be paid like we're discussing ah, a few patience for crying out loud slow down give me give the guy a chance and, <laughs> and, and the, the, the other thing like, to me yeah, like the slow a pop here yeah, Hang on, the, sorry, um, you repeat that. The Jeffro's other thing like, too, oh, <laughs> never mind. Shut up, Jeffro. MPS, can you repeat that? <laughs> Jeffro's like Captain Slow from Top Gear. <laughs> it's like everybody just settle down, just wait until he gets there. All right, Jeffro. That's after it. You. So um, we will actually be working our way through cats, and then we'll work our way through uh, miscellaneous animals. Then we do the fictional, and then we'll leave dogs till last. So. Uh, yeah. All those of you sort of throw in the spoilers, just hold them back. Yeah, get on with it. Okay. So um, if you're a fan of 70s television, you might remember this one. This is actually from the um, TV show called The Fantastic Journey. So this is uh, Liana's cat, um, who was her companion, and its name was called Silel. So they can communicate uh, telepathically. And the cat also acts as a bit of a scout. So it goes on ahead and then reports back. So um, I was very impressed that I actually uh, remembered that one. So also on TV, uh, we, of course, have uh, Spot the Cat. So um, the interesting thing about uh, Spot is I found out it was actually played by six different cats. So if you're a real nerd, you would be able to spot that, no pun intended, uh, when you're actually watching the show. Did you ever find it interesting? I know I did. That Spot and Jones were both ginger cats. Well, the irony. What's the irony of that, eh? Well, the, the, the chances of that. So there you go. Yeah, I guess they make really cute cats. And of course, uh, in more recent times, uh, and this is uh, one of those examples where Dag sort of said, "Oh, what about this and all that?" So I have Dags to thank for quite quite a few of these ones. Is uh, of course Star Trek Discovery. We have books cat called Grudge. So. Um, there you go. There you go, Luke. Bit of patience, mate. Bit of patience. <laughs> That's the younger generation again, isn't it? Yeah, well, I like what Aaron's saying here. The Because yeah, I'm getting, getting a bit shirty, they're all commenting faster. So uh, yeah, I agree with that. But anyway, keep going, Jeffro. 
So let's move on to the uh, the next one we have, and that's not everything cat or dog. So this is the miscellaneous. So uh, let's look at uh, everything that's not a cat and a dog. There wasn't now, that many. There, hang on, hang on, slow down. Before you get there, uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron said about the cat that was the glitch in the matrix. I mean, that's a pretty obscure one, and that was. You're right, it was a cat, but it wasn't anybody's particular cat. So, yeah, uh, that's an honourable mention. There you go, Jeffro. That is an honourable mention, <laughs> and, yes. And, and I've got a couple of honourable mentions for cats that Jeffro might have missed. We got uh, Lucky from Elf. Oh, yeah. And we got Battle Cat and Panthor from He Man. And, that. and Jeffro, this is where you're in big trouble. Where's the one from Doctor Who, Planet of the Giants, mate? What's the deal with that? Is there a cat well, nerd? what can I say? I'm not a bigger nerd on Doctor Who as uh, Bill is. So uh, there you Sabrina's go. Sabrina's cat. Yeah. Okay. So I, we did, go. I did think about Sabrina's cat, but uh, I class it more as comedy than fantasy. Now, what this about, is what one spelling. This is what one typo can do for you. Where is my car? My car is parked in the garage. <laughs> I think you're saying, where's my cat? She was, she was here early before we went on air, meowing around my legs. So uh, there you go. And, and you forgot about the cat in James Bond. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not science fiction or fantasy. No, so. no, I didn't mean that one. I meant pussy galore. Anyway, let's move along. <laughs> this is meant to be a children's show of sorts. There you go. Oh, he's finally corrected his spelling. Where's my cat? Yeah, Lulu. Yeah, she's around somewhere. Anyway, let's move on. Otherwise, we'll never get there. Okay. Okay. So uh, in the famous not cats and dogs category, we have, of course, from latest Lost Ark, which is Snuff the, uh, the monkey. And... Um, one of the interesting pieces of trivia is that uh, this uh, character was actually voiced by voice artist Frank Welker. So uh, you'll get to find out a little bit more about Frank in a, in a moment. So uh, the interesting bit of trivia I found out was that it took 50 takes to get the monkey to do the Nazi salute. So um, how patient would you have to have been on set with that uh, freaking monkey? And if you look... When the monkey comes up, it's filmed a certain way, and when it goes back down, it's the same footage, just reversed. So uh, yeah, they obviously couldn't <laughs> get it go back down again. So there you go. It's clever. Um, now uh, the um, the one in the middle is from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's the Magrafine sperm whale. So uh, couldn't get a decent picture from either the movie or the television um, uh, series. So I went with the um, uh, the picture there. So we all know that that was a uh, product of the infinite probability drive. So that in the uh, the bars of petunias. And on the uh, the right, anyone want to hazard a guess on this one? No. Uh, it's so, the monkey from the Ghostbusters TV show, but I can't remember well, its name. Well done. So you're indeed right. So it's from the, uh, the television show Ghostbusters. It ran back in the 80s, and it's Tracy the, uh, the Godzilla. Because the three, the, the, the interesting thing, thing is that the three characters that they had were called Spencer, Tracy, and Kong. So that was Tracy. And so one of the actual humans was called Kong. Um, speaking of that, uh, you had honorable mentions, Kitten Kong. A few people have mentioned this from uh, the goodies. Uh, technically, Mr. technically a comedy. Yeah, I know that. Mr. Bigglesworth, that's from Austin Powers, isn't it, dude? That it's is like, technically a comedy. No, yeah, it's, no, it's still classified. Very good. Okay. Okay. I'm calling okay. it a comedy. Referee Very good. This one is the cat from outer space. There you go, Jeff. Ray, All you're right. Trying. Yeah, okay, Colin. I'll, I'll <laughs> pay that one. There you go. For, All right. For, for. Very good. All right, we're moving. There we go. Moving along. So uh, from the Doom Patrol, the, uh, the TV series in the first few uh, episodes of the, uh, the, the season just on, we had Cliff Secord, and uh, he was shrunk down to miniaturized size, and he befriended a, uh, a rat. So uh, what I found interesting was the fact that they actually gave it its own poster. So uh, that's uh, about the only mouse entry we've got. Uh, in the middle, of course, we have from uh, Sequest, we have Darwin. So, um, yeah, what I found interesting was that um, Darwin was an... A, uh, a not a real dolphin. It was actually a uh, an animatronic. Okay. And the other interesting thing is that um, Frank Welker, who did the voice for the uh, the monkey, uh, also voiced the human vocalizations that Darwin put out. So he's got a nice gig doing uh, animal voices. And we'll get to more of his uh, examples later. And then, of course, uh, 
on the opposite side in the television land, Land of the Lost. So here we have the uh, the pet dinosaur called Dopey, who's a, a baby brontosaurus. As the old joke goes, some, sometimes I wake up Dopey, other days I let it sleep in. <laughs> <Let's>, <laughs> <laughs> um, just uh, very quickly, Stacey reckons, oh, you're smart, MPS, because you know stuffs, which is uh, uh, very, very, cool. answer, but, um... <laughs> very good. Tomo, you're behind the eight ball, son. Uh, we had Jones earlier, so there you go. And uh, there you go. And uh, Michelle likes Sequest. I thought it was complete tripe myself, but each the run. And uh, very good. So there you go. Moving, Moving on. on. We have uh, up in the top left from the movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, we had Esmeralda the Sea Lion. So here we uh, see Esmeralda with uh, Kirk Douglas, who was playing Ned Land. So that was, um, uh, she was actually a great sort of uh, animal actor, I guess. Um, I, I loved that movie and I loved uh, what, what chemistry those two had. And of course, uh, down the bottom, we have uh, the. Um, um, I've gone mental blank now. Actually, um, hell, dude. the head with the snowy owl from uh, Harry Potter, and uh, and one of your suggestions, Dag, that I thought was really good. We have uh, Livingston, the um, uh, the fish from uh, uh, Star Trek: Next Generation, and that fish is actually an Australian line fish, which I didn't yep. know. But I thought that was pretty cool. So that's um, Q and uh, Livingston in the, the ready room. The funny thing is, because you knew that Livingston was there, whenever you had a shot of the ready room at Picard's ready, you always looked at the fish tank to see if the fish was swimming around. And you sort of do wonder sometimes if they bother putting him in there or whether the fish was off somewhere else. But when he moved, you go, oh, there he is. So it's almost like spot the Livingston. So uh, at, least that's, at least Livingston is the name that he had, I presume. So there you go. Uh, oh, and and does, that, does, that, does that sea lion... Does, does he give Kurt Russell a seal of approval for the song? Or? <laughs> you know what? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, and Kirk, had to say, we're going to need a bigger submarine. So there you go. Very good. Okay. Okay. So we move on to uh, Fantastic Beasts. So uh, these are all the uh, the the pets and the animals that don't really fall into the human sort of category. So uh, the one on the left we have is, of course, from uh, the Dark Crystal, and that's uh, Fizzgig. The loyal sidekick to uh, Kira, so it's it's like a, a furry dog with big massive teeth. That's probably the best way you could sort of describe this <coughs> gig. In the uh, the middle, we have I think a lot of people recognise the uh, the luck dragon Falcor from uh, Never Ending Story, and um, another one that uh, Dags recommended is the uh, the sandworms from uh, June. I like how you've gone for two cute ones and a really ugly one. So there you yeah. go. It's a bit like our show, really, with the three of us. <laughs> 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 oh, golly. So there you go. Tomo, you're talking about gremlins. Go to slow down, son. You're just getting ahead of the head of the program. So there we go. Um, Hedwig, is that the name of the owl? Oh, Hedwig. Yeah, Hedwig yeah. was the name of the owl. That, that's correct. And there might have been a cat and honey that really shrunk the kids, but, you know, and... not really. Yeah. There, there was more a dog, but we'll lead to that later on. So, and you're right, you are right, Sue. There were worms in tremors as well. They're the ones that created all the all the hassles. So, very good, well good, done. Good point. So, uh, from the uh, the movie Dark Star, we have um, a character that actually doesn't have any real name. It's just called the uh, the beach ball like alien. It's just the so alien. That, yeah, that's the one that uh, escapes and Pinback has to run all through the ship trying to uh, to grab it back. So. All right, I'm just going to pause you there for a second. So Luke has asked which one is the ugly one, and Daniel has said, "Who's who with cute and ugly?" Uh, I'll let the audience. We'll let the audience decide. Who they think. <laughs> I think I know where I fit in the scheme of things, and uh, I'll take uh, I'll take Luke's suggestion, but the audience can decide for themselves. So there you go. Continue, Jeffro. Okay, so uh, we also have in the middle there um, from the Fifth Element. That is actually um, a character by the name of. Um, Picasso. So in the uh, the movie, Zorg had this pet, and uh, it was yeah, it's a cute little character. So uh, that sort of made the uh, the ranking. And uh, another one I have to thank Dax for because I wouldn't have thought of it at all uh, is uh, Legend, 
there were two unicorns in the uh, in the uh, the world, and they were required to be killed off so that darkness could fall upon the world. And I would have never thought of uh, legend, but that was certainly a good uh, good choice. Well, it, 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 and if you want to just put a bit of a sci-fi bent on that, of course, the unicorns reappear in Blade Runner in the dream sequence of the extended editions and all the rest of it. But that uh, that that creature at the bottom, Picasso, that was kind of weird when you watch the Fifth Element. You go, what's the deal with that thing? It's like, where did that mm. come from? So, yeah. it was it, bizarre. It looked, very, yeah. it looked very similar to one of the aliens in Evolution uh, with David Duchovny. You know, they had all the aliens that were coming up, and that looks like one of the sort of cute ones, which then goes a bit sort of, not so later on yeah and also uh in legend with the with the unicorns even though some people crack the shits and said oh unicorns aren't really meant to look like horses regardless of that they looked absolutely fantastic in the movie with the horns and i don't know how they got those horns to stick on but uh i it was it was absolutely beautiful so yeah well done to ridley scott and his team for that staplers they use staplers yeah 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 hot gaffer tape yeah exactly a bit of bit of goop yeah exactly right Okay, so uh, back into the uh, obscurity of um, uh, some movies, and this is actually from the 1979 movie The Humanoid. So this is uh, uh, the dog Kip, a robot dog who's companion to uh, Richard Keel there as uh, Galoop. We have the, uh, the Predator's um, Hellhounds. So, uh, and another one I have to thank Dags for, I would never have thought of, was from John Carter, from Mars, this is Wula the space dog. So um, he's described as having multiple rows of teeth, six legs, and can run so fast you can't even see him. So uh, would never have thought of that, and someone probably would have picked me up saying, hey, what about that dog from John Carter? But thanks to Dax, <laughs> we have it in here and now. There you go. Um, with Kip from The Humanoid. Now, The Humanoid was one of those Italian Star Wars rip-off movies, right? And Kip is clearly meant to be a variation of R2-D2, right? And mm. of course, doesn't do much the head moves and the tail moves and that's it right it's like so dodgy and it's so like what's the point of it it uh, you can't help but have a laugh but uh anyway uh richard, richard liked it so there you go it was all good but uh, and the one from yeah john carter from mars that's actually a very very good sequence with that with the what are things called uh, how it moves really really fast it uh yeah has all the characteristics of a dog but uh, just very very quick so there you go there we go. And on the, uh, the Star Trek side of things, we have the, uh, the Klingon uh, Targ. So as we know, Klingons are kept as both uh, domestic pets and also hunted. Uh, in the, uh, the middle is the classic uh, pet of all time, the, uh, the Tribble. And on the, uh, the right-hand side from Star Trek Tree, we have uh, Crook's pet lizard dog looking very uh, nasty there. Now, one of the great trivia questions you used to ask is, what is the name of Krug's dog, right? And it's not mentioned in the movie at all. It's actually mentioned in the novelization, and mm -hmm. I believe it's Warrigal. So, uh, yes. there you go. so which is kind yeah, of funny. You, I actually had to Google that up, and you were right. It's only ever mentioned in the book. Never try and out-nerd the nerd, so there you go. Um, anyway, Jeffro, Carol's just chucked this one out of nowhere. Don't forget, da I can't even pronounce it, Danary's Dragon's Dogon Race. How, did, how long did it take Carol to type that out? Because, like, that's the spell checker would have gone off its planet and just looking at that. So, uh, believe me, <laughs> I can't forget Danary's dragons, and I will. Yeah, very good. <laughs> uh, Tom, are you behind the time again? We've already had the June of Sandworm Sun. You must be watching this in like a like a really really delayed um, uh, sort of like uh, playback there. And uh, yeah, it's very good. Um, hang on, hang on, Aaron, you're getting ahead of it. We haven't got to dogs yet. Aaron, slow down, son. Just, just. Chill pill it, mate. <laughs> so there you go. We get to dogs at the end. Very good. And Tribbles, that's what's that's in the middle. In there right there, Jeffro. Yeah, absolutely. So um, classic classic pet. Everybody really? loved to have Tribbles as a pet. Except, Except the they were actually born pregnant. So there you go. All right, move on. So uh, moving into television land, we have uh, from Lost in Space, Debbie the Bloop. So basically got the name from the sound that it made. And... Um, in the middle, we have uh, from real Ghostbusters, Slimer. So I thought, well, uh, I'd better count uh, Slimer because, uh, I mean, it was sort of a, a, a pet to the guys, particularly in the uh, the, the cartoon uh, series. And uh, on the uh, the right, we have our uh, token Doctor Who rep representation with uh, K-9. So K-9 introduced in the episode The Invisible Enemy. Uh, Professor Marius offered K-9 to the Doctor because uh, 
uh, canine was a big help to the doctor and, um, and many adventures ensued. It's probably safe to say that using a robot dog was a far better idea than using a real dog. I mean, practically, it would have been a lot harder to use a real dog because of the show went for such a long period of time. But because they use their mechanical dog, it's become more infamous for that reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only problem they experienced was a bit like uh, R2-D2. If the uh, surface wasn't smooth, um, it was a little bit um, hard. Mm -hmm. So they had to often try and pull it along subreptitiously with a string and, and things like that. Yep. Okay. So uh, we have... Um, Gizmo, of course. So uh, the kind of friendly mogwai that uh, was part of busy Billy Pelzner's life. In the uh, the middle, and I don't know how I came up with this one, but uh, this is uh, uh, from Mork and Mindy, as you could probably uh, gather by the suit. And this is Bebo. So Bebo is Mork's ball of fur pet that zips around the floor at a quick pace and featured very promptly in season three. And then, of course, uh, our because there's so many different uh, Star Wars um, uh, animals and, and, and characters and such. I thought, well, I'll just put in one. So I went with uh, Salacious Crumb, the monkey lizard, and uh, favourite pet of the underworld. And because he was sort of more a pet, I thought, well, I'll, I'll go with that um, as the example. Um, so you're right, Susie. A lot of people liked Gizmo. I like the idea that you feed Gizmo at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and he still turns into a gremlin. You go, hang on. The rule is you can't feed him after midnight. Midnight where? It could be midnight and like Saudi Arabia for all we know. So it depends on what <laughs> Gizmo we're working to. So uh, there we well, go. You know gremlins can't tell time, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, exactly right. So there you go. Uh, very good. So now okay. we're moving into the uh, animated characters. So uh, all the ones that sort of uh, featured, uh, as I said, in our uh, animated series. So... Uh, the first thing we have is, of course, the classic um, uh, pet characters of Astro, the pet of uh, Elroy, Elroy Jetson. Now, um, the next one, of course, is Dino Mutt, uh, and that was another character voiced by Frank Welker. And finally, on the, uh, the right, uh, one from uh, Inspector Gadget, and that's Brain, uh, a master of disguise, and uh, also voiced by Frank Welker. Okay. So uh, moving right along, we have uh, from Meet the Robinsons, Buster. So um, the description on Buster is that uh, it's a dog who wears glasses because uh, according to his uh, owner, his insurance won't pay for the contacts. Boom, boom. Uh, in, the, um, in the middle, we have um, Bandit from... Um, Johnny Quest, so named because of the uh, the mask that uh, the bandit sort of seemingly apparently has on his face, and then of course uh, on the right uh, the um, uh, the character Doug from the movie Up, so uh, cute little character where Doug speaks with a special collar that translates his thoughts into uh, uh, into words. Other than that. Uh, uh, there are uh, some good examples of uh, animated dogs. Um, one from Michelle, uh, something from the Navigator, an alien, wherever it was. Do any, either of you two know what that one is? An alien, uh, the Navigator is a really obscure indie movie made by an Australian director. Uh, I think it's called Navigator, a medieval odyssey. But uh, it's, yeah, it's very, oh, very obscure. Yeah. And I don't know what yeah. Artax is. I don't know if Artax is coming up at some point. Too. Uh, that's that's the brother of Blue Tax. <laughs> Very good. good. <laughs> I thought yeah, the Navigator was the, the film with the silver liquid ship. It no, that's the the Navigator. Not in the Navigator. All right. Yeah, it's easy to mix them up. So there you go. Anyway, move along. Okay, so we um, have uh, Porky Pig and Daffy Duck from. Uh, um, Duck Dodgers in the 24th half century from 1953. Uh, we have here uh, Nibbler from Futurama. So that's actually Leela's pet. And uh, she quickly and incorrectly thought the Nibbler was a defenseless, cute and stupid animal with enormous appetite. But of course, Nibbler uh, proved to be much more and uh, also known as Lord Nibbler. And um, favourite on the end, of course, we have One Rover One. Uh, standing next to Seven Zark Seven from Battle of the Planets, 
So um, the trusty robot companion. And it was interesting to note that in the, uh, the scripts, they used to write the dialogue as Beak Barp. Beak, so but a tongue tied today. Uh, uh. Beak, beak Bark, as in terms of whenever uh, that dog was supposed to speak, that was what the dialogue was. So, Michelle, you forgot to put in flight of the in your navigator. So, no wonder I confused the crap out of everybody at this end of town. Um, so, and Daniel said, Artax was a horse from Never Ending Story. Okay, only a nerd would know that. So, uh, well done. And But Ange got it. He knows that Artax is a horse. So, uh, <laughs> there you go. How good is that? And uh, and even though, Joni, uh, yeah, we're not talking about Flintstones. We're going in the future, not in the past. But uh, good old Dino, of course, uh, yes, is uh, another famous Exactly one, so. right. All right. So um, on, the, on the left here, we have Crypto the Superdog and Ace the Bat Hound. <clears throat> so uh, this is from a uh, Warner Brothers uh, cartoon series from 2005 called Crypto the Superdog. And uh, Ace the Bat Hound also appeared in uh, different forms in Batman Beyond, Brave and the Bold, and the Justice League action. Uh, in the middle, we have uh, Josie and the Pussycats from Outer Space. So we have the character Bleep. And uh, Bleep was uh, a really cute sort of ca character. I wish they'd merchandise Bleep. I think they could have sold truckloads, a bit like the Mandalorian uh, baby child. Uh, and um, on the right, of course, we have uh, How to Train a Dragon. We have Toothless, who was uh, Hiccup's best friend and uh, also, I guess, his pet. Now, at long last, we move on to the uh, the list of dogs, and the list of dogs is extensive. So we'll start off with the most famous first. So, of course, we've got uh, Doc Brown's pet, Einstein. Uh, now, the interesting bit of trivia is, of course, that Einstein was the first one to time travel. So uh, the guinea pig of the, uh, of, of the movie and um, prove that time travel could be successful. In the middle there, we have uh, Frank the dog from Men in Black. So uh, memorable first appearance where you see uh, a small kiosk and there's an odd looking man selling keys and then there's a dog only to find out, of course, that the dog is the one that actually does all the talking. And uh, on the right hand side, of course, uh, the classic uh, Wizard of Oz where we have uh, Toto. So Toto needs no introduction. Um it's a very interesting question from Michelle saying, looking at it from a certain certain point of view, um, could Leia have been classed as a pet to Jabba the Hutt? Well, yeah, it's, at least she was taller trained, so that kind of helps. So uh, you never, never well, see, know. See, I don't class the latest scum as a pet. I, I see him more as a, like a, you know, something else, but he's certainly not a pet in my okay. eyes. Yeah, it's all semantics. So there you go. Um, uh, you want to drag it as a pet? Is that before or after it uses its fire to blow your head off? Because they tend to do that. So uh, there you go. How good is that? And um, Susie wants Gizmo as a pet. Oh, okay. Oh, I was Gizmo as a pet. Okay. Very good. So anyway, we move on with our woofers. We're sticking to the woofers here, kids. We are. So uh, getting back to uh, Honey, I Shrunk the uh, the Kids, we have uh, the, uh, the dog uh, Quark. So um, featured very prominently in the movies and the, uh, the posters. And in the middle there, from the uh, the television show The Bionic Woman, we have uh, Max the Bionic Dog. So uh, the backstory behind Max was that he was donated to uh, uh, the labs for Rudy Wells to uh, experiment on. And when the dog was critically injured, the time was right to try out the uh, Bionic. So it was a uh, implantation that uh, meant that Max got four Bionic legs and a Bionic jaw and only cost a million dollars. So uh, can next to uh, Steve Austin was relatively cheap. He was a bargain and, basement. Yep. Yeah, bargain basements, yeah, prices. And then uh, I think most people would recognize the uh, the dog from Mad Max, so the Australian cattle dog. And what I did find interesting when I was doing my research is that there's actually a fan film called Mad Max Renegade that actually tells the backstory of the, uh, of the dog. It wasn't the same dog that was rescued from the laboratories that where they put the bionic implants in a bite. <laughs> anyway, let's move on, shall we? So there you go. <laughs> so uh, on the left, we have uh, the, the movie from the uh, 70s there called uh, A Boy and Its Dog. So um, I found the, uh, the description of uh, the movie a little bit uh, disturbing when I looked it up. So uh, the actual boy there, um, 
he's not actually a boy at all, is accompanied by a well-read misanthropic telepathic dog named Blood who helps him locate women to rape in exchange for food. Now, is that a disturbing movie or what? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, don't tend to remember it uh, all that well, maybe uh, for good reason. Uh, in the, uh, the middle, we have Digby, the biggest dog in the world. So uh, an old English sheepdog that um, accidentally gets that way by drinking a uh, liquid growth formula and um, comedy ensues. And uh, speaking of comedy, we have the absent mind professor, uh, which most people would know sort of from the remake that uh, they did called Flubber with uh, Robin Williams. And uh, that's the uh, Scottish terrier named uh, Charlie. Got one here from Aaron. Right, all the humans were pets in Planet of the Apes. Actually, you'll probably find that the only time they used them as pets was in Conquest of the Planet of the Apes. So there you go. So you can chew on that one for a little while. Not in Planet of the Apes, that's the main thing. So there you go. And the reason why they're pets in Conquest of the Planet of the Apes is because all the cats and dogs have died off from a disease and human beings needing pets have gone to chimpanzees and, 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 and apes and all the rest, so, uh, which is uh, part of the story. And then they realise they can be domesticated and taught to do chores but that's another story anyway move on yeah so in the uh the less sort of um a bit more obscure sort of uh, range of uh, movies we have uh from barb wire so there's barb's uh, dogs who had a fondness for biting men in the crotch that's about as good as it gets uh, of course in the uh, the movie the thing of course we had the uh, norwegian uh, dog that played an integral part of the uh, the things nefarious uh, means to be able to sort of uh, assimilate uh, there. And finally, uh, from E.T., there's Elliot's dogs, Harvey. So uh, three uh, a bit quite less obscure dogs. Um, the one for the thing in the production, there's a sequence where the dog walks down the corridor and just sits down. It's like a sphinx. It's just looking straight ahead. And they said when they filmed it, because they, they trained to do that, and when it did it, they said it was just so freaky because it just didn't move. It just sat down, looked straight ahead, didn't move, didn't nothing with the ears, nothing. And they said it was just like bizarre. And uh, that's the reason why it was uh, really, really convincing as being an alien infested dog uh, in the movie. So uh, there you go. And of course, it did appear in the end of the 2011 movie. So there you go. And from the uh, the movie I Am Legend, we have the uh, the dog Samantha. And I guess you probably guessed that because that featured. Uh, uh, quite heavily in the posters, and of course you got Will Smith there. Uh, I guess the uh, the middle one most people may remember uh, because you got Sarah Jessica Parker there and the little Chihuahua, and that is uh, Mars Attacks. So of course the weird thing, of course, is that uh, the, the the Martians actually uh, combine the Chihuahua and Sarah Jessica Parker, and what you get is uh, her head on top of the. Uh, chihuahua which is one of the more freaky things you'd ever want to see in a movie and uh on the uh the right hand side of course uh from star trek discovery uh no, enterprise enterprise <laughs> sorry enterprise let's rewind that one back and of course on the right we have uh from star trek enterprise the um, the wonderful porthos who doesn't really do much in the show other than look damn cute and, of course, he gets referenced in uh, the first or was it the second Star Trek movie of 2009 where Scotty said he's, uh, you know, he's, that's right, he's been exiled because he uh, uh, beamed out, you know, one of the Admiral's most favourite prize beagles. They don't mention Porthos, Porthos by name, but it's implied that it's definitely uh, this Porthos. So, uh, yes, it was very, very clever. Now, uh, again, this uh, is getting into more unfamiliar territory. So... Uh, I defy anyone to look at the one on the left and actually say where that dog's from. So I will actually go ahead and tell you. Because, is, it, is, uh, it, is it? Is it? Is it? Got, is it from Fraggle Rock? No, that's actually that's a very good um, guess. I mean, I, you, not so much Fraggle Rock, but I, I you could have said uh, uh, the Storyteller with uh, yeah, John Hurt because it does sort of look like uh, that dog. But no, actually, this is Barney from Gremlins. So he actually uh, threw people off. This is a second Gremlins reference. So that's actually Barney, the pet to the Pelzer family. And Spielberg actually said, uh, and I quote, one of the best actors in the film. So I don't know what that says to the other guys in the film, but uh, he said that. 
uh, on the uh, the right hand side, uh, that's actually the dog from uh, Beetlejuice. So uh, major player in the deaths of uh, Adam and Barbara, uh, because what happened is that they swerved the car to avoid the dog, and of course uh, that's how they ended up dying. So uh, yeah, you look at those and you go, uh, no idea. You if you if you can recognise the scenes from the movie, you are a real nerd. Anyway, moving along. On the uh, on the left, we have the Fly Two. This is a golden retriever. So what happened was that um, they used the uh, the dog in an attempt to try and sort of teleport. Things went terribly wrong. Yeah, and we'll stop. We'll dog, stop it there. Okay, don't don't say what happened. Up well, uh, from from the uh, the middle, the movie, the voice, the bottom of the sea. So you may have got that from um, seeing Barbara Eden there with uh, Michael and Sarah. And uh, on the right is the dog from the hidden. So the hidden. Uh, great movie and the alien that uh, is taking over bodies uses the uh, the dog to be able to sort of uh, es escape so uh, the uh, the last ones we have of the, uh, the sh of the presentation tonight are Vincent the uh, the Labrador retriever from uh, lost uh, interesting enough it's actually um, played by a uh, a female so a female dog playing a a male character in the uh, the middle we have from the television show watchmen uh these are um, uh, dogs from the the uh, forever pets uh cloning company so they clone animals so that uh they can always stay uh alive forever and i was one slice short and i thought what am i going to do i can't think of another one and then suddenly it hit me my favorite movie buckaroo bonsai so uh, that's actually the uh, the uh, duck hunters uh, dog from the uh, scene where they find the uh, the electroid ship. So uh, there you go. I've got Buckaroo Bonsai in there, and uh, that's it. That's our presentation for t today. So thanks um, for watching, and live long and prosper. So Very Michelle, cool. you are going to be disappointed, Lassie. Where does Lassie appear in a pop culture science fiction movie? I mean, come on, get with the program. It's like someone mentioned Skippy earlier. It's like, oh, come on, let's get serious. One of the ones that was missing, uh, and I think it was mentioned somewhere, was Muffet. Uh, got off from Battlestar Galactica, which started off as an actual dog, even though they call it a daggett. Oh, ended up I see, yes. Dog. Yeah, originally that was on my uh, list when I was thinking off the top of my head, but it never actually got the paper. So, yeah, that's actually, that's a good one. I'll pay yeah, that one. And, and I... Yeah. Chomps as well. Yeah, go on. Sorry. Chomps. I got yeah, Chomps is, Chomps is good. Yeah. I've got some honorable mentions across the board. We forgot about Miss Kitty from Batman Returns. Selena Kyle's cat. Uh, Glee. Uh, yeah, Glee from Super Friends. He was the Wonder Twins monkey. Bleak yeah. From yeah. He was the Twins monkey. Um, Pluto from, from, I don't know if he was Goofy's dog, but, you know, there's a dog being the pet of a yeah. dog. Case. Comedy and Fang from the Phantom. Yep. Oh no, hang on. Fang's actually also from Get Smart as well. Uh -oh. It's actually Sorry. Devil is from the Phantom. Sorry? Devil is from the Phantom. Yeah. Fang is from Get Smart. Yeah. Come on, dude. Hang on. Can everybody out there in the audience help me sort of like get the force with these two dudes, mate? They're just like yeah. letting me down on a regular basis. Holy guacamole. Let's say let's say he missed it by that much. <laughs> Very good. All right, so we're going to nick off. I do apologise. I'm probably going to see all these comments later on. Go, oh, that was a really good one. It was a shame I missed it. So, uh, but anyway, we'll worry about that next time. So, for everybody, uh, as MBS said, next week's the Star Wars show. Week after, we're back to talk nerdy. So, there you go. Uh, yes, Kelvin. Uh, yes, we'll see you in the VR world. Very good stuff. All right, no worries. Leave you all to it, and we'll see you uh, for you all nerdy people back in a couple of weeks. So, in the interim, make sure you stay nerdy. Okay.